Welcome to the B3 Biennial of the Moving Image, a cross-media film festival in Frankfurt, Germany. My name is Jasmin Hagendorfer. I'm very, very happy and pleased that I can today do the interview with Javus Potomus. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Jasmin Hagendorfer. I'm part of the Porn Film Festival Vienna, and uh, Javus and me know each other for quite some time now. Uh, and yeah, this is the fireside chat with Javus Potomus. So, Javus is the founder and the festival director of the Transition International Queer and Minorities Film Festival here in Vienna. And we want to talk today a little bit about uh, identities, about his way in life that ended up as being a festival director. And yeah, how this uh, all came up and uh, what is the idea of the festival? How is it going at the moment? So yeah, uh, very welcome. Thank you. Jaros, um, maybe you want to introduce yourself a little bit and give the, the viewers a little bit of uh, focus. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, my, you did a great job. Yeah, my name is Jaros. Uh, my background is Turkish. Uh, I came a long time ago to Austria and yeah, ended now as a festival director and activist. Yeah, I'm very happy and busy right now preparing the next festival in six weeks. Yeah, this brings me maybe to the first question. <laughs> when is actually the next festival happening? Yeah, the next festival is in November, 17th to 21st November. So it's five to six weeks. So I have a lot to do right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, was, uh, as I know part of your biography very well, because we're working together and uh, doing quite a lot of activities together. I know that you came to Austria as a child of a guest worker, and uh, I wanted to know about your experiences on that. When did you arrive in Austria? How was the first time like? What was your experiences? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how long ago is that actually? Phew, that's a very long time ago. As I came end of the 80s, in 1987. Uh, my father was already in Austria. Uh, he was working here, so one day my mother told me, to jump in a bus, uh, we are going to my father. So I ended in two days and overnight in Vienna. It was really a shock as a kid. And then it was really a Sunday evening, raining in Vienna. I came to the train station and then really met also the first time my father. And then it was really too much for a little kid. And then Monday, the next day, uh, I ended in the school with 30 uh, Austrians and I had no idea what to talk. I had no idea the language and then, but it was interesting experience also. Could you actually talk a little bit of German or was it like totally Turkish and you were thrown inside of the class with yeah, your exactly. classmates? Yeah, exactly. Really, I was there and everybody <laughs> was looking at me. I was the only uh, kid with black hair. Everybody was looking, who is this guy? And I had really no idea. They were talking about me. It was really difficult the first week, but the teachers were really, really helpful and then trying to help me, support me in the situation. So did you come with like your whole family or just parts of your family? Were you the only child coming to Austria or was it like a big family moving to Austria? Oh, I'm coming from a big, big family. It's a typical Turkish. <laughs> so I have uh, five siblings and, and my father was already here. So I came with my mother and my brother's sisters. So we ended all here. And, uh, I like being in a big family also. The support is really good also. Yeah. And maybe uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your career, because I actually know that you have been working in an insurance company <laughs> before, in all, before doing all the activist stuff and all the festival stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're working in an insurance company. How did you get there and how was it there for you? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. After the high school, I wanted to work and I wanted to work in the office. Uh, I was always, I liked being in the office. So I applied for a job in insurance finances and ended there and worked almost for 10 years uh, in the insurance and finances. It was a good experience. I think I learned a lot and it made me also today as I learned for my career a lot. But yeah, it's a very uh, different stuff of finances, insurance, and now what I'm doing, they are really two interesting uh, parts of my life. 
And as I know, you are a queer activist, you are a gay activist. So uh, did you also have like a kind of a coming out inside of the insurance company? So um, as I know, you are a gay activist, you are a queer activist. And did you already had a coming out directly at the insurance company? And how was it? How did people or your colleagues back then react to that? Oh, it took me a very long time. I think after I, I think after five, six years, I was brave enough to come out on the start. It was not easy because I was a Turkish guy working in the insurance company. Everybody was so, yeah, the Turkish guy, okay, uh, he's here. Uh, after my coming out, I was uh, suddenly the cool guy and I was like, <laughs> oh, he's gay. And then that's so cool. And now he's a part of me. I was really a little bit uh, shocked and I didn't know what to do with that. but. Uh, everyone reacted really uh, nice and I had a lot of support from my boss uh, so it was easy and I think it, I helped also a lot of uh, people in my company to come out after me I think I was, was the first in one year we had 20 people they came out in the company it was an interesting experience <laughs> and was there like also did you did this uh did this also influence your work did you support lgbtq people also from inside the insurance company did you change something also there like regarding new new rules or new insurances for people from the queer community yeah because uh i think until end of the 90s the insurance the understanding of insurance and family was uh father mother and the kids so I was always thinking about what if I have a family and I have a husband and, and the insurance is not covering because I don't have a wife. So I talked to, to the uh, CEOs of my insurance and then told them the story and then they start thinking about all that. And it took us one year to change everything in the insurance. And that was a very, very intense time. But now the insurance in Austria have all that. Mm -hmm. So there, there are big goals that you already accomplished. I think this maybe also led a little bit to your activist career because I know that you also founded uh, Mige in 2009, an association which offers queer migrant men a platform, a contact point. Uh, yeah, what was the beginning of that? Uh... Yeah, I, I was always thinking to, to bring people to, together. I was, uh, I felt always lonely being Turkish and gay. So I was thinking how to reach other gay people or gay migrants. Uh, and, and the association was the best way to start. And the first idea was more cultural. And I started with a magazine for queer migrants, but it turned very fast then to an NGO or an association where people start coming together, talking to each other. And it was really a magazine for queer migrants. The first time in Europe uh, with 60 languages, that was really a, was a big step. Uh, and yeah, that was, that started like that. Did you also think at that time that, especially for queer migrants, there was not enough help or not enough platforms? How was the, the the rightful the law situation in those times did you get any kind of help or response from from the austrian government was this like kind of your idea to 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 bring it up a little bit more uh that, there, there are enough uh, associations in vienna for queer people but there were mm -hmm. no association for uh, queer migrants so it was also difficult with the language uh, my idea was to bring people because i think the first step is to find people they are speaking their language so they can help each other support each other and i had a lot of support from the government from the city because it was the first time uh so and the uh, ng and the lgbtiq community in austria supported me also uh with contacts uh connections and then really they were supporting a lot on the start mm -hmm. i think this is a very very interesting and cool goal actually because double marginalized people need really a lot of support and a lot of help and and a lot of people uh, being behind them, supporting them and giving them new perspectives. So this was, I think, a very big step. Yeah, it's, I think it's not easy to be mm. uh, Turkish and gay or, or Serbian and lesbian or Iran and trans person. You have really uh, different uh, 
stories and then and, and, and you need help and you need really intense help. Your family is sometimes difficult or your family wants to kill you. So you need people, they understand your background, your culture, your religion, your family situation. So that was really the first step of my association mm. to give the people that the feeling they are not alone, they are not lonely and it's not disease uh, what they are feeling and having. Mm. Yeah. After having established Mige, after uh, making a magazine for queer migrant people. So a lot of stuff was going on in your life. But actually, how did you end up doing a film festival? And I know it's not only one, because uh, dear lovely audience, Javas is doing the Transition International Queer and Migrant Film Festival, but is also part of the Porn Film Festival Vienna. But actually, how did you come up to transition? How, how did this story evolve? What was your interest in establishing a film festival? I always loved film. I loved cinema. I always, when I had time, I went always to the cinema. It was for me the place where I can hide and think and dream. And I was really, and, and I liked the red carpet, the glamour and all that. It was always as a kid, we are dreaming all of that. But uh, before I came to the uh, film, uh, industry, I, I stopped working for the insurance. After 10 years, I had one night, uh, the feeling it's enough. So I went to the office and told my boss that I am quitting my job. And it was, and he said, okay, good, if you like so. <laughs> so I really, overnight, I completely stopped working and called my mother that I quit my job and I'm now going to travel a little bit. Uh, so I went to Canada, then to Brazil traveled uh, in Europe and I was thinking what to do the next step in my life. So I came back to Vienna. There was a film festival uh, that I went because I was never missing film festivals. I was really, because it was an amazing place to meet new people and connect and talk about films. And so when I went to this queer festival in Vienna, I realized there were always stories uh, from white people and European people. Mm -hmm. It was a missing something. There were my stories, there were no migrants. And if there were migrant stories, it was always the negative killing and then getting married and then beating up from your family. But that's not the only reality. So I was a little bit mm -hmm. upset and then disappointed of the situation. Came home and I was really, really irritated and talked to my boyfriend and said, you know what, this is, this is not okay. I'm visiting so much festivals and there's mm -hmm. never my stories uh, told. So I said, you know what, can I do a film festival? How difficult can be <laughs> organizing a film festival? So I Googled uh, really uh, how to organize a film festival. And I said, okay, I shall try it. So I start writing concepts and, and applied the next day already at the city and said, I want to do a queer festival for migrants. Uh, and, and that's how I started. Okay. Maybe. And was the city of Vienna, were, were they like positive about it or were they like kind of skeptical because there is already a queer film festival in Vienna like did you get a lot of uh, prejudices about that that you really want to focus on on queer migrants on queer minorities was there a lot of rejection on that of course the first uh, was uh, why we need now a queer migrant film festival because we have a queer film festival why we cannot connect them both uh, but my idea was to tell my stories on my own we Queer migrants can tell their stories also, and I don't need other people to talk about me or about mm -hmm. my life, about my situation. And it took all the time, the city to get back to me. And this time I had a huge network already. So I talked to people in Europe. I told them that I have this idea and everybody was so fascinated as Queer Migrant Film Festival, the first time in Europe and say, wow, that's a great idea. So after I think three or four months, I get uh, okay from the city. They said, okay, you know what? Let's do it. So it started really very, very small because I was really not experienced. So I started with a three days film event. That was really film days, not a festival at the start. Uh, three days with six films. And I had, I think in the first year, four guests, but it was really an amazing experience to bring uh, people together, so many queer migrants together and queer stories and not only negative, there were so many positive stories. It was a huge success. and. And of course, uh, it was for me, uh, I wanted to do more. Like three days was not enough. Mm -hmm. Six film was not enough. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember like what were the first films that you showed or what was really the, the first film of, of, of transition? Uh, 
uh, of course, I will never forget it was Sasha. It was a, a coming out story of a Serbian Croatian uh, guy and his family. It was a really lovely story. So I invited the director and the main actress. And it was also for me experience because I'm, I have the chance to invite people to talk to, to, to see people. It was really, and the story was amazing, lovely, and we had a nice chit chat. And then I, and I think I will never forget, I still I'm in contact with Sasha and with the director and also with the actress. They are still remembering and they are sometimes visiting the festival. And it's really, really it's a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said like three days, six films. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This was a big start, I think, for for uh, for Transition. I think the name of Transition in the beginning was a little bit different. Yeah, it was uh, Queer Immigrant Chefintag as a Queer Migrant Film Days. Mm -hmm. So, and it changed every year. We got bigger and bigger. And then I said, okay, we need to change also to a festival. Uh, and we need also a new, because uh, after three years of doing this festival, uh, there are enough other festivals started in Europe, other queer migrant film festivals. So in Amsterdam was the next step, in Copenhagen, and uh, now we have in Albania, in Kosovo, in Pakistan, queer migrant film festival. So I said, I need still something special. I need to uh, find a new name and then transition fits, I think, perfectly mm. for queer migrants because we are non-stop as a migrant, as a queer person in transition. So it was, I think, <clears throat> 2019 or 18, uh, we changed the uh, name to Transition International Queer and Migrant Film Festival. So, wow, what a story, actually. You were like the first of the Queer Migrant Film Festivals. You initially started like a lot of festivals coming after you. This is like really a big step for Europe, but I think not only for Europe, but around the world. How many queer migrant focused or mainly focused film festivals do you think there are? It was still not enough. Uh, I think we need <laughs> everywhere <laughs> queer migrant film festivals. But I think now uh, it's around 12 or 13 queer migrant film festivals in Europe in, uh, and then, and more and more are coming. Uh, also, bigger queer film festivals worldwide are starting also having focus uh, in this topic. Mm -hmm. So it's also important big queer festivals are including this topic. Mm -hmm. Also, one uh, question that I also have kind of uh, on my list is like, um, because I know that you often got invited on conferences or workshops or talks uh, also about your religion, about being queer. And I wondered if you maybe want to say a little bit about that. And, uh, you know, like for I think for a lot of people out there still, there are so many prejudices, prejudices when it comes up to uh, being a Muslim being queer there are so many things that actually exist in in the heads of people that say no this can't come together but i just wanted to ask you what is your perspective on that why are you giving a lot of lectures and talks on that i think it's it's very important as as i started with my activism it is okay to be gay and turkish it is also okay to be gay and muslim or what religion you want to believe it 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 People think we cannot be religious and, and queer. That's completely nonsense and nobody can tell me what I can believe. So I'm, I'm also part of Queer Muslim Network in Europe to support all the people there because mm -hmm. I, I, not, I believe in God and I believe uh, in a lot, but queer Muslim, being queer Muslim is also giving me a peace. And, and I'm visiting conferences every year in Amsterdam to this topic and also supporting other queer Muslims and telling them it's okay you you can believe in what you want and then and if it's that what you want it's okay don't because when I said the first time hey I'm gay and I'm Muslim they said oh no that you cannot mm. do that also my own friends told me are you crazy you cannot be Muslim and you are gay I said why not who is who can tell me what I can do or not yeah, and the session, yeah, who, yeah. Said, well, if I, we start judging each other also in our own a small community that's not right so it's it's very important so that's why i'm also doing speeches to this topic mm, quite interesting quite interesting um yeah also i will maybe include that i'm in yeah, two course. weeks again at the queer muslim conference in amsterdam so i will also show their films uh with teenagers or young people also show them films about queer migrants and, and help them 
to to see different stories it's very very important for me mm -hmm. um yeah transition has now i think uh had nine editions so far so that's quite actually a story um yeah the 10th edition of a transition will be next year maybe you want to tell us a little bit about how transition also grew how like you said like beforehand there were three days six films what is the situation now for you how has has transition grown and what kind of festival is it now oh it's, it was an up and down it, <laughs> we started really a small festival then we once we had i think the record i had was nine days film festival and wow. it was crazy <laughs> that was really a hardcore uh, we had nine days i think around 70 events with a lot of guests from the Europe that was to manage really hardcore. Mm -hmm. It was too much because for our NGO, a uh, non-profit NGO, we were working all for free. It was so I, I changed again to back to four days event because mm. it's easier to manage. Uh, and yeah, it's next year, 10 years celebration. Uh, I, I don't have right now plans, but I want to yeah, bring, I think, all the people I had in the last 10 years together again uh, next year to Vienna. Invite all the queer migrant film festivals in Europe to Vienna, have also a small conference about mm -hmm. this topic. So, but it's, I'm, uh, <laughs> we have enough time for that. It's November, 2022. Uh, yeah, the question is what is the next, what I will do after uh, transition 10 years, because I like doing new stuff also. Will I start a new festival or will I continue transition? Uh, but I think it's very, very important Uh, as a festival in Austria, also because we are now uh, also the only queer film festival uh, in Austria and still the first one with the focus queer migrants. So I have, uh, we will mm -hmm. continue, we will grow and then people are still in Europe coming to us and jury and a lot of film festivals in Europe uh, visiting other festivals and, and it's important to visit these festivals and, and talk about this topic. Mm -hmm. Um, I also know that, um, like, I think maybe two years ago, uh, you also changed, like, uh, Transition was formerly a only queer minorities focused film festival, but you changed it to a also involving queer film festival. So how did this idea evolve? Why was it important for you to open up the film festival a little broader again? Uh, yeah, as I said, we had a queer film festival in Austria for 25 years, but they decided uh, to stop uh, and then they didn't want to continue after 25 years. So, and queer, when Austria needs, we have a huge mm -hmm. queer community. So, and queer migrant film festival was there. So I decided to open the festival a bit more for the entire community, for the society, because we still need the queer migrant film festival as their own, because we need the safer space for us, but also we have to uh, also include the queer, the entire queer community. So uh, I decided to have two parts of the transition festival, mm -hmm, okay. once in June for the entire queer community during the uh, Pride month uh, in, in cooperation also with the Vienna Pride and then November edition for really more focused on queer minorities. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I think it's, it's very important and we need more visibility. So once a year it's not enough so we have two festivals now. <laughs> okay um sounds great i'm in i can <laughs> tell <laughs> um yeah i just also wanted to know like uh kind of what would be your absolute ideal goal what kind of guest is there like kind of a wish inside of you like Ah, this person I always wanted to invite to the festival. This would be so cool, no matter who uh, who he or she is. So would would it be something like that? A good question. I never thought about that because I don't know. Uh, I've, transition, maybe the, the reason why I never thought about it is because transition also supports and helps really uh, small uh, film companies or uh, people there are maybe not famous. We are trying to really support the community also. So uh, big celebrities are uh, nice, and, and, but I never thought about inviting big names to the festival. Uh, I'm inviting everyone that want to join us. So 
but I will think about the question. It's a good question. Maybe I should start thinking about who, <laughs> what was my dream person I, I want to invite. I will tell you maybe next okay. time. <laughs> good, good, because you know you never know who is listening. So could could be first step. Um, I all also was wondering a little bit, uh, like doing this festival now for nine years. What is your um, mostly appreciated or also maybe funniest festival memory that you have? Uh, funniest, um, I think more but funny. I had once a story but that was not funny more sad or i was just happy uh, i had showed once a film uh a pedro that was and after the film and uh, people were sitting still 10 15 minutes and coming not out and i was so what's happening inside i knew what was happening inside so i opened the door and everybody mm -hmm. was crying inside oh. and, <laughs> yeah and, and i knew in that moment that i did my job right because they were feeling and cinema is emotions and then mm -hmm. and, really people understood the film and, and it was really amazing feeling to see 100 people sitting and couldn't move from their seat because they were so emotional and were crying so um, it's not funny but it was a really good good moment to know as a festival that you are doing your job right otherwise i'm, I'm uh funny funny memories uh i don't know i don't i'm always funny so uh but funny moments uh, i will think about it i don't know right now <laughs> But I think this is like one of the biggest goals you can ever do, like uh, hosting a film festival. It's I also think it's not only about being uh, positive and showing positive emotions and happy endings and good stories. Of course, this should also be always, I think, a part of a film festival. But of course, it's also about the fears we have to overcome. It's about the sad times that we all have in our lives. It's about... It, yeah, it's about stories in life. Also, this is this involves all of emotions, and I think as long as you can trigger emotions inside of a festival, this is always like a very very good sign for curating and bringing a program together. And this brings me maybe also to the next question <laughs> a little bit, because I wonder, or maybe the audience also wants to know, how do you find your films? Where do you get them from? How do you find them? What is the process also behind the film festival? I'm watching a lot of films. I don't know how many films I watch in a year, but I love films. I can sit and watch non-stop films, but I'm visiting, as I said, a lot of film festivals. I'm, I'm visiting mm -hmm. almost every year uh, Berlinale uh, and Teddy, so I can see all the films, what is coming new. But also we have uh, a submission where people submit, can submit their films. And that's, of course, that's one of, uh, where we really find a lot of movies. Uh, we have every year submission over Film Freeway where we get the last three years, almost every year around 3,000 films people submitting. Uh, and you need huge team to watch all the films. It's not possible, but we are trying to watch as much as possible. But it's really, really hardcore work to see all these films and select all these films. Of course, I'm not doing that alone. I have a team, uh, but also if you visit that much film, so you you see a lot and you connect and you know what is coming new. So I have all the new films also from the Berlinale or Teddy. Also, I'm looking for completely uh, films that are not at festivals, so I can support them, show them at my festivals and bring them also to other film festivals. Mm. That's very important. And of these 3000 films that we are now talking about, is like everything focused on queer topics or do people uh, submit a lot of different stories also like also straight stories or not migrant stories so is there a lot of things coming in that you, you of course have to look at of course that's uh, people don't read always everything because if they see minorities and, and not read the queer part or read the queer and not understand what really mm. queer means so they're uh, I think some we, we had it half sometimes is uh, minority stories and they are really, really good stories and they are not queer. So also I try also to show minority stories also because that's also important. It's not, not everything is about queer. We are queer film festivals, but also minorities film festivals. So that's mm -hmm. also I'm selecting all the minority stories to show them at the festival. But it's a really uh, not easy uh, job to see all these films. Mm, uh, I can imagine, as I can totally imagine. Um, but mm -hmm. sorry, to yeah, cut you, but uh, I'm also not trying to have a fee for submitting the films. 
because I think that a lot of people maybe cannot because they don't have the capacity or the money. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have really amazing films but cannot pay the fee for submitting. So it's for me still important uh, to have the submissions for free. Maybe I start. I forgot also on the start transitional queer migrant film days was uh, also the first uh, five years the only festival and uh, completely for free we had the festival for the first oh, okay. five years for free entrance just by registration because it was important to to really that everyone has the chance to visit the festival to watch the films but after five years it was also a huge uh, pressure from the industry and, and film companies mm -hmm. also filmmakers that they they, they don't want that they want to make money also so it's it's not easy also i would love to do it so for free but then you don't get bigger mm. films or the film companies stop working that's also another issue in the industry yeah of course i still we i think we all can't escape uh capitalism mm. this is like the how the world goes <laughs> round okay, but um, yeah still it, we are trying <laughs> to trying to have really uh capacity for people they if someone comes to the cinema and says hey i don't have the money can i still watch that's totally okay for us that's also very important for me we have always a contingent for people uh, for refugees um, migrants or people they are jobless mm -hmm. and stuff like that it's really everyone is welcome and then it's, it's if you don't have the money or capacity mm -hmm. you can always join the festival i mean as i'm really for mm -hmm. me this is important and as far as I can tell from what you said before, it's also not about only picking out the the good, important, high end productions from from Hollywood or somewhere else, but maybe also about showing films that have maybe a low budget or are on an amateur base or whatever. Also, young filmmakers and kind of that stuff. As I, as far as I get it right, yeah. and as you also said, like. Um, you want to involve a lot of things and people uh is is there a lot of corporations going on between ngos here in austria or maybe worldwide is there things or parties whatever kind of that you want to involve inside of the film festival each year of course i'm trying every year also to have corporations with other ngos in austria associations or uh parties and then because it's also important to so I get their support and then we can help each other. We can support if I show a film about HIV or AIDS. So I'm trying to have a cooperation also with the AIDS Hilfe Wien, also with the AIDS Hilfe Foundation in Vienna. So they can also talk about their association and we can talk about the films. It is important to tell stories, but also, also have partners. They support you and then they also reach the audience. Because I'm trying to bring people together and then mm. in, in the cinema, I think uh, that's also part of my work at the festival. I like bringing people together to network and then and come together. That's that's important. I think this also can be seen in your name. Also, this is like for me sounds like a, a transition of society. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, things you want to change and and things you you see that you can change with with that. Do you still think that your uh, festival, uh, even after the ninth year, is still a uh, very political and activist? Is okay. it like that? Is there, is there, you know, of course times change, but like I, I just wanted to really hear it from your side and from your experience. Do you think there has changed so much? Is there still many things to do in society in the industry? Of course, there's still that's not enough. We have we are still activist film festival. We see the queer refugee issues or generally refugee issues in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, still, it's very tough to be a migrant in Europe if you are not white. Uh, you have troubles. I have sometimes still troubles as a Turkish guy, not gay, mm -hmm. but I still cannot sometimes go in bars in Austria because I have black hair. Mm -hmm. So the festival is still very important and very activist and the industry also if the queer migrant films are all, not always in big film festivals, so you need the right people to be at the bigger festivals. So that's why uh, my festival is one step to maybe if I can support them to go to the bigger festivals. Mm. Do you also think there is still also some prejudices or things uh, that have to change within the queer community regarding especially the queer migrant or minority aspect is there 
is is there also like a kind of exclusion within the queer community of like minorities of migrants of refugees because the queer community is also not always open-minded we are talking always about being open-minded and want to be accepted but also we are not accepting all uh, there's also huge issues in the queer community so it's also a part of work of the festival to, to uh, talk about this issue in the queer community. So I'm also inviting uh, queer community to my festival uh, to to meet refugees or queer migrants and then and talk with them and connect with them and see that we are all the same. We are not different, and then we need to work on that. Hmm. Wow, that's uh, quite a lot of goals, actually. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of things still to do. Uh, yeah, what do you think will, will be the next step for transition? Is not like the 10 years festival is coming up. Is there like uh, some plan for next year? What's going to be expected? Is there like a big celebration maybe of like doing this for 10 years now? I think there will be a big, big party and celebration. If, if really <laughs> I get the right fundings, hopefully this year, I really would mm. love to, to invite a lot of queer migrant organizations also all over from Europe, also the festivals, the festival directors of this queer migrant film festivals, okay. yeah, they are doing all great job. And, and also a lot of maybe queer migrant filmmakers, they never went uh, in their life to film festivals. So also young people uh, motivate and then create more films i would like to uh, help and support more young queer migrants to to create film and and then work in the industry i think it's also maybe it's the next step of transition to support more young uh, queer filmmakers how uh, to go more in in film mm -hmm. uh yeah brings me uh, up to something also um when somebody looks inside of the uh, home which of transition uh i there is also a part that is called transition academy actually <laughs> so um maybe you want to tell a little bit uh as, as i think it was written it, it's the first edition now coming up in this year so maybe you want you want to tell a little bit what is transition academy for who it is mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Transition Academy is this year first time, so we are trying what I said before, uh, to have a small academy starting uh, for young queers uh, between 16 and 26 to help them or learn uh, film, filmmaking and photography, history of queer. So it's the first time they will have a three days uh, coming together, strangers and then learning how to make a film, how to uh, work on in the film industry, how to uh, photography, what is the history mm. and what it means queer migrants. So it's really a packed program in three days. It's, it's a good step uh, for next year because we need more uh, queer migrant films or queer minority stories. Mm -hmm. I think this is like a, a good way to also get new films and, exactly. <laughs> and and especially help young people to really get the first steps on on producing, on doing films, on, on getting new ideas and perspectives. And I think uh, there could never be enough of that, actually. There are so many creative people outside <laughs> and they can do so much good stuff, but they need support. And, and, and mm. if I have the chance or we... We should we should share that and help and support that's very important mm -hmm. yeah so maybe you still again want to say the dates of the upcoming festivals i have here the <laughs> the, the wonderful flies claim your space claim your space people yeah the next yeah. edition is 17 november to 21st uh, it will be a hybrid festival we will have it in person and and online so people can watch it also from home uh, we are still in difficult times so yeah, hmm. maybe you want to tell the audience also again, like, what is the name of your website? Where do you find all this information? www.tiqmf.at <laughs> And yeah, I think also there will be a lot of things to find about you. Javos Kutomus, Google him, <laughs> find him, write him, uh, oh, nice. connect to him. There are uh, quite cool, uh, cool things coming up. Thank you so, so much for giving me a lot of insights into the festival <laughs> and also so the lovely audience uh, on 
what does it really mean to uh, organize a film festival, uh, how much time consuming this is and how much energy you really put inside of that. So thank you so much. And yeah, I hope we all hear us soon. Thanks for that.